I've been asked today to talk about decarbonizing industry. And the challenge of decarbonizing our industrial systems is a significant one, as we know, especially when you consider that right now emissions from heavy industry, including the energy sector, represent more than three quarters of annual global greenhouse gas emissions. Achieving mid-century net zero will require technological innovation, collaboration and delivery at an unprecedented scale and pace. The International Energy Agency World Energy Outlook 2021 released just last week makes clear the criticality of action over the coming decade to keep 1.5 degrees in reach. It also articulates the opportunity describing an annual investment of $5 trillion across all sectors. Some of the speakers today have or are speaking about key facets of the transition, such as electrification, the exciting future role that green hydrogen will play, and the essential role of critical and energy transition minerals. These are all critical components of the ecosystem of technologies that will be required to deliver on the goals of the Paris Agreement. Investment in and development of many different low carbon options are going to be required. And while the challenges of transitioning our core energy systems of electricity and natural gas are indeed substantial, not to mention complex, there are a range of approaches already being deployed and more are in development. Many communities, companies, governments and those in the finance sector have already embraced the Paris targets for reducing carbon emissions. What we need now is practical momentum, practical solutions to the challenges we face. At Worley, we view net zero as a mission. And if net zero is our mission, then helping to decarbonize the industry as it moves to an electrified, low carbon and distributed energy system is our job. For more than 100 years, Worley has provided engineering, project delivery, operations and maintenance services to the energy industry. We understand what it takes to deliver complex energy and industrial infrastructure. We've grown from a small Australian business to almost 50,000 people across 49 countries doing just that for our customers in the energy, chemicals and resource sectors. Last year, our people spent 72 million work hours on site, keeping our customers' critical infrastructure running over one of the most difficult periods of the industry's last 100 years. We are active in the deployment of technologies enabling the decarbonization of industry. We are decarbonizing existing fossil fuel based assets in the UK. We're involved in many of the UK's industrial clusters, including the bioenergy carbon capture and storage or BEX project at Drax, as well as developing post combustion carbon capture facilities at the Phillips 66 Humber refineries, part of the Humber Zero project in Australia. We designed the world's largest operational carbon capture utilization and storage process at the Gorgon Gas Project in Western Australia. And elsewhere, we're using drone technology to detect and help repair fugitive emissions. We're also readying the world for a future hydrogen economy by adapting natural gas and its infrastructure to be hydrogen ready. In the UK, we're carrying a two hydrogen village feasibility study supported by government funding. The studies are about repurposing existing natural gas pipelines, which supply approximately 4,000 homes for use with pure hydrogen. We're working on hydrogen projects in the world over, more than 100 to date and counting. In the UK, this includes the Gigastack 100 megawatt green hydrogen production facility, where green hydrogen will be used to decarbonize the Humber refinery. We're also doing concept designs for two of the leading blue hydrogen plants in industrial clusters. We've undertaken a range of hydrogen and ammonia projects in Australia and this year complete the Australian hydrogen market study for the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Delivering more than 90 first of the kind chemicals and fuels projects across the world, like helping the aviation uh, industry transition to sustainable fuels. We worked on Europe's first waste to jet fuel plant in Immingham, northeast Lincolnshire, close to the Humber Estuary. And of course, deploying renewable technologies at scale and pace across the world, like the work we've complete on one of the world's largest concentrated solar plants in the Middle East, the largest wind farm in Africa, as well as the inspection and maintenance of 70 percent of the, of the UK's offshore wind fleet. Now, we know there's much to do and the pace and scale of the challenge is unprecedented. 
The International Energy Agency's Net Zero by 2050 roadmap for the global energy sector outlines the scale and pace of this task. The IEA pathway suggests by 2030, we'll have, we will have constructed a solar park every day equal in size to today's largest solar park. From 2030 onwards, every month would see 10 heavy industrial plants equipped with carbon capture, utilization and storage technology, three new hydrogen based industrial plants and two gigawatts of electrolyzer capacity. But here's the rub. By our analysis, if governments and the private sector continue to develop energy infrastructure the way we always have, we won't get to net zero by 2050. We may not even get halfway. Work we've completed with Princeton University's Andlinger Center for Energy and the Environment shows there's a major challenge looming around the speed with which projects can be delivered to market using existing project development and delivery methods. To achieve the mission of reducing carbon emissions to net zero by 2050, it will take a paradigm shift in the way we develop and deliver projects. So what's standing in our way? The good news is that broadly, we know what we need to do to, to achieve this. We need to electrify, improve efficiency, abate emissions, decarbonize power generation, decarbonize supply chains. The biggest challenge we face is in fact delivery. And most of that challenge is about delivering at scale in a tight time frame while maintaining community values and transparent governance. Right now, most builds are bespoke. Each time we start a project, we go back to the drawing board and then through a lengthy approval process. Each time we start from scratch, we waste time and time is a luxury we do not have. We must accelerate the deployment of new or evolving technologies and we must adopt strategies to manage change and innovation on a global scale. And all of this must be achieved at pace. Standardization is critical because the world needs to do so much so quickly. By designing one and building many, we move to a system where we can develop and run projects in parallel. We can build more and we can do it faster. It will enable us to eliminate complexity and cost and speed up supply chains, paving the way for smoother global rollouts. Supply chains are a key area of focus. Demand for a wide range of goods and services on this huge scale will require new global supply chains to emerge and local supply to scale up. In Australia, there's already momentum to meet the growing demand for green minerals, which has real potential to add value to the products made on Australian soil. Projects will need to be developed under large programs of work with common designs such that processes and approvals are streamlined and schedules dramatically reduced. Strategic investments such as infrastructure and hubs need attention to make sure decisions are timely and the many stakeholders can act with confidence. Advances in digital technologies are already playing a significant role in disrupting delivery and business models. And although low carbon energy choices need to continue to develop, technology will not be the barrier to delivering a net zero future, nor will economics. As Princeton's Net Zero America study suggests, we will not see energy prices move above historical peaks. We believe the greatest barriers will be the non-technical elements of project delivery. The traditional approaches of project feasibility, engineering, sourcing and delivery will not work for this kind of scale and must be driven using digital twins, replicable models, manufacturing platform based fabrication and construction together with end to end data capture across the life cycle of projects. Collaboration and communication, standardization, redefining value, new technology, achieving net zero calls for a complete 360 in the way we approach delivering projects. To move forward, we need to turn our collective minds to make some decisions consensus decisions. Getting stakeholders engaged with a mission offers potential for a common purpose. The key to meeting the challenges of regulation, resolution of property rights, financing and broader public policy. Businesses and governments, financiers and operators, developers and communities will need to work together in a way which doesn't usually happen beyond times of crisis. We need to build coalitions with new and broadened definitions of what constitutes value to build aligned mission consensus. Governments can lead from the front on this, setting the policies and objectives which will inspire new partnerships to be formed. We all know achieving consensus is not easy, 
but this is where we need to put the spotlight because consensus on some principles and design will unlock many of the challenges that lie ahead. We need to come together to reimagine how we deliver projects. And when I say we, I mean all of us. Each of you here today has an important role to play. Everyone involved in creating infrastructure from governments, investors to construction companies and engineers will need to be involved in this reimagining. So let's imagine the future for a second. It's the year 2021, 12 months after we've achieved our net zero ambitions. Think of the possibilities for Australia. It's already an energy superpower in 2021, but imagine it becoming a global sustainable energy superpower using its bountiful clean energy resources to smelt green metals for use both domestically and for export, keeping more value in country by sending green steel rather than iron ore overseas, exporting clean energy to our neighbours and beyond, building immense sustainable economic value for the people across Australia, both in the regions and our cities. To get there, programmes of projects running in parallel will be required. Industrial hub sharing enabling infrastructure, avoiding the wasted time of developing sequentially, constantly sharing outcomes, ways of doing things better, improving costs and schedules with each asset. But that future isn't possible if we don't act now to transform the way we deliver complex energy infrastructure. Unless we change the way we do things, we won't even get halfway. We need to come together to work intelligently with the solutions we have, as well as fostering new ones. Our focus needs to be on project design, minimizing the bespoke and maximizing the standardized elements of design. Also on planning, we need to revolutionize the process by which we choose and approve big projects. And finally, collaboration and partnership. We need to coordinate a huge amount of activity and resist parochial preferences. We need to do these things or the 2050 we face may be different to the one we're talking about today.